Hi everyone, this is part of an ongoing series in which I overanalyze Beyond Good and Evil. If you have not seen the previous videos, I recommend, nay demand, you click the link in the corner to be taken to the playlist. So without further ado, enjoy. Perfect! Perfect! <laughs> Perfect! Upstairs, we find a thoroughly sad goat man who stole a passcode from the alpha sections. As punishment, his entire family was taken away. This is dark. This is... this kind of stuff happens in real life dark. Despite its cartoony look, Bianco and Evil does not pull any punches. That's probably why it left such an impact on so many of us who played it during informative years. Okay, here's another little thing. This is the single most satisfying way of typing on a controller I have ever seen. It is quick, it's stylish, it's perfect. If there is one thing I want to come back in the prequel, it's this. Using the code we found downstairs, we go in and take a pearl. Before talking to peepers, there is another pearl up for grabs. A shark man named Francis is kind enough to just let us win it in a fun little minigame. Shoot all the discs onto your opponent's side to win. We find out about a treasure hidden in a volcano and run out of distractions, so fine, on with the story. Mentioning the password to Peepers lets us play a round of Three Coconut Monty. Since Peepers wants us to win, he makes it easy on us. Also, Jade just kind of does the tracking for us, which is nice. I'll let you have number three. I'm sure you will like it. There's a beautiful old locker. Suggest you take a look at it. And whoa, did you notice the page isn't going upstairs? That's important. We take a look at the beautiful old locker and find ourselves at Iris HQ. And since I have to mention it at some point, the Iris is a part of the eye, so it's a fitting name for a group that wants to help people see the truth that's very profound, I know. We're introduced to the members of the network and given our first mission. Friends? Allow me to introduce you to Jane, our new agent. I was hoping you'd make it. Come closer. This is May, editing and distribution of our newspaper, Iris. Nino, radio operator, transmissions, and tireless poster sticker. Hey. On these screens, you can see the majority of our correspondents. They operate all over the universe from more than 13 different systems. You already know Peepers. It was his idea to offer you the job. He knew you would complete the test successfully. <laughs> You'd have to be blind not to see it. The kid's bursting with talent. Now listen up, Jade. The events are gaining momentum. Adam's bomb has exploded in the canal. Obviously, the Alpha sections have sealed off the sector. They've embarked everyone there. To take care of them, right? No hospital has received any victims, Jade. The governor of Hillis contacted us as soon as she heard the news. She's willing to help us, but her HQ is under surveillance. You could help us to save these people, Jade. Nino, give us a brief on the situation. Here's what we know. The victims are kidnapped by Alpha Section agents. They are then taken to the Neutropils factory. Shuttles are then used to take them to the old slaughterhouses. And from there, they are loaded into military cruisers headed for the moon. We don't know what they're forced to suffer. None of our agents have ever returned from these cursed places. Four days ago, we lost contact with Double H in the Neutropils factory. He was our best agent. And friend. Double H was supposed to have brought back proof of the Dom's traffic. His last photos are terrifying. A spirit eater. We need someone to take over the mission, Jade. You can refuse. Continue. We need proof. One, you get inside the Neutropils factory. Two, you take pictures of the Alpha sections and their victims. You'll be in constant contact with May. She'll broadcast your photos as quickly as she receives them. People must know the truth. Yeah, I'd like to know too. Like who's actually telling the truth in all of this? Here's an official city pass. We got it thanks to the governor. It will open certain doors for you. Good luck. The individual members I find rather forgettable, but their designs, on the other hand, are memorable enough. They're not forgettable enough to be obnoxious, but memorable enough to be fun enough. 
you get it. Jade agrees to take on the mission, not because she trusts Iris, but because she will only believe her own eyes. In times of rampant propaganda on both sides, this is a very reasonable stance to take. We also learn about Double H, the agent who used to go on infiltration missions for Iris, but was captured in the Nutriple, but was captured in the Nutriples factory four days ago. We receive an M disk that runs us through what we've just seen. The Alpha sections have deceived us. Since the beginning of the war, they have been controlled by the Doms and profit from the general chaos to kidnap innocent people. I love general chaos. It's very much a hidden gem in the Mega Drive's library. Thanks to Double H, we now know where the victims are taken to on Hillis. One, the Nutripills factory. Two, the old slaughterhouse in the shuttles. Three, the moon in a cargo cruiser. We must put an end to this nightmare. Every proof we can find relating to this conspiracy will bring us more and more support from the people. A general uprising would allow us to overthrow the Alpha sections and save thousands of innocent lives. If the revolt spreads, we may be able to end this war. But we need photographic evidence to find out exactly what's going on at the factory. Photos of the victims. Photos of the Alpha sections without their helmets on to know who they really are. That's where you come in, Jade. You take over Double H's mission. Here's his last report. I think ship's log might be a mistranslation. 1923, I am in the Forbidden Zone. 1930, I can see the shuttles coming and going from the upper platform. 2003, I have succeeded in penetrating into the factory. 2050, I'm exhausted. I must have swam almost two miles. 2110, I'm inside. That's it, I can see the black cases. A noise. Hey, what the... Apparently, they've trained a Reaper. The presence of this animal along with the Sigma rays are the proof of the presence of a Spirit Eater. These are his last shots. We've had nothing else for the last four days. Radio silence. Double H was our best reporter. He's done a lot for us. Thanks to him, the Iris Network was able to get in contact with the Governor of Hillis. The Governor is radically opposed to the Alpha Sections and their methods, but she must not be found out. She's willing to help us if, on our side, we let the truth be known, and if more and more Hillians trust the Iris Network. If you find a door like this one, photograph it and send the picture to the Governor. Her team of experts will try to find the code. We are counting on you, Jade. Be careful. Hunt. I like that we can see here that Double H is terrible at taking photos. None of these prove anything. They're just a shot of a building in the distance with no shuttles in sight, a conveyor belt with boxes on it, and a blurry photo of Bigfoot. I think for that reason, the network has probably been considering hiring Jade for a long time, and the loss of their only field agent in the area prompted them to finally reach out. It's kind of like a, uh, this war can't be won by sending in big burly army men, only the undeniable truth can make a difference or something like that. We also learned that even the governor of the entire planet, while opposed to the alpha sections, wouldn't be safe from them should her connections to the network be discovered. We're asked to pick a code name and without hesitation Jade responds, Shawnee. Whoa, so important. What does it mean? What? Why did I write make ghost noises? I'm not doing that. With the city pass, we can get distracted by a well-dressed stranger and enter a part of the city we couldn't go before. We visit Ming Tzu, my favorite NPC design in the game because he's super cute. Mentioning the password to him gives us access to a backroom with MDisc copies of the Iris, which I guess is also the name of the paper. We also get a third subscription here, so we get more of that delicious lore. This shop has some of the most important optional items for sale the animal detector, the pearl detector, and the super attack strengthener. The first two are going to save completionists a lot of headache and, to some degree, make sense in the lore. The super attack strengthener, not so much. It's never explained how the super attack works or what it is or why Jade can perform it. This power-up seems like a very abstract thing the devs put into the game because they thought firing homing shots while spinning in the air sounded cool at the time. I wouldn't have a problem with this if Jade attached it to her big staff or something, but... Okay, look at it this way. The fandom wiki page for this item is empty. It's 
Very unclear how this thing ties into the world. I feel his ability should have been unlocked through a story event as Jade learns more about... Oh wait, that's a spoiler. <laughs> that's horrible. <laughs> Ooh, that's a spoiler. We also grab health upgrades for Jade and the hovercraft. I love that if you're diligently taking pictures, you can buy almost every item in the game right at the beginning. It feels like you're doing everything right, you know? Time to read the paper. Hill is under fire from the Dom's meteors. The alpha sections are overwhelmed by the events. Read issue number 512 from Iris. Iris 511, a new wave of kidnappings in the pedestrian district. Reporter Double H. The Doms have once again struck hard at the Hillian population. Another 850 people have been reported missing since last week. The so-called protection given by the Alpha sections against the Dom's attacks is derisory at best. Iris 512, Hill is showered with Dom's meteors. Reporter Double H. The canals, the Mamago garage, and the lighthouse shelter suffered a violent attack from the Doms yesterday. The protective shields were not able to stop the Dom's meteors. The Alpha sections did not arrive on the scene until after the alert. The Alpha sections are incapable of assuring the protection of Illus. Okay, this doesn't seem like a lot, but here we learn a fact about Iris that unmistakably gives them the moral high ground. They suspect the Alpha sections are conspiring with the Doms, but they don't have any evidence. So instead of slinging mud and publishing wild claims, they stick to the facts they have. Even if the Alpha sections really try to protect Hillis, there is plenty of proof that they are doing a horrible job at it. It's a logical first step in the attempt to undermine them, and it's the best they can do for now. We overhear a conversation through which we learn that the origin of the Alpha Sections is unknown, which should be very suspicious. It kind of reminds me of the plot of Terry Pratchett's The Amazing Maurice and His Educated Rodents, which is a very good book and you should read it. You probably thought we were going to the Nutribles factory, but nope, there's more optional content. These protected districts are mini dungeons accessed with different key cards throughout the city. Despite its convoluted appearance, this one is a mostly linear navigation puzzle. I'm not sure what the purpose of this facility is though. While the content of the containers are classified, we do detect biological activity. I would assume that this is part of the human trafficking process, but the containers are being dropped into a fiery death pit, drastically reducing the cargo's resale value. So I'm officially stumped. Maybe I don't get it. Maybe the devs just wanted a conveyor belt level. I don't know. I love how biased the text here is. We didn't steal a pearl. We took it back. Time to moonwalk out of here. There was some kind of weird traffic going on with some cases and a pearl. We head on over to Mamago to buy a bug zapper and the Dom sent bugs for us to zap. This time we're dealing with multiple Dom's fighters. They seem more concerned with shooting down civilians than actually attacking us, so they're easily taken care of. The fact that the camera keeps leveling makes it a little tricky to aim up, but camera issues are always to be expected in games from the early 2000s. We go home to check on the orphans because dialogue is the best. Every one of these kids has a tiny little story going on. You don't miss much by ignoring them, but they're here if you want them. Zaza has nightmares, probably from all the murder and kidnapping. She's the most recent arrival at the lighthouse, so her trauma is likely very recent. Yoa, who the camera swears is human, has been learning English or French or whatever language you're playing the game in. She's also trying to tell us something about Iris. Mysterious. Woof is always asleep. Pablo says he saw Woof with Jade's camera, and I don't know what to make of this one. Jade hasn't stayed at the lighthouse in days. Jade is never shown to have more than one camera, and if she did, she probably would have given the older one to one of the orphans. Maybe there used to be a side quest where you can find a second better camera by following Woof around and this dialogue is a leftover of that. Maybe that's the reason why you received the zoom so early in the game, because originally you were supposed to find a second camera that gives you that ability. Content gets cut all the time, so that wouldn't surprise me. Meeting Kip, he talks about Zaza sleeping outside, but is starting to open up a little. Kip is also the one teaching Yoa the language, so he's taking on a big brother role for at least two of the orphans. 
Umi lets us know that she'll take care of everything while Jade is on her mission. Umi is probably the oldest and most mature of the kids, possibly standing in as a new mother figure in Jade's absence. Fen the Fantastic roleplays a knight. He seems to do this regularly as Jade immediately switches to old-timey speech and addresses him accordingly. The French fansite bgemyth.net mentions that Fen aspires to join the alpha sections. I believe that Jade may have been giving Fen martial arts lessons, but the meditation at the very beginning being a body awareness exercise. This kind of bonding would explain why Fen seems even more attached to Jade than the other orphans do. We also finally find that PA1 that you've been yelling at me for. I'm sorry, I'll try to do better. We head to the roof because the animal detector told us to. There's a just barely visible creature up there that we can't get a good photo of. What seems impossible at first can actually be solved quite easily if you've been paying attention. If you haven't solved this puzzle yet yourself, close your eyes. I'll only show the solution, no audio spoilers. <laughs> Okay, open your eyes. That was a very clever puzzle that actively rewarded players who are interested in the inner workings of the universe. Fun! We give Piggy some snacks. When mama won't go, better call mama go. I have no idea what that means. Grab a mecha impulsor and finally head towards the factory. I can't believe you fell for it again. <laughs> Uh, we find another PA1 and hand it out to her buddy because why not? This cave is a combat gauntlet with reused assets and enemies from the Black Isle. It plays like a linear version of that. There's no plot significance to this place and no new mechanics. Just a little side adventure for a PA1, a pearl and some cash. We use a new cannon to blow up the guard bots and make our way into the factory for real this time. We dock and make our way up. We beat up some BCs and send our first barcode to the governor. After a short delay, we get the code and open Sesame. Okay, we're gonna have to keep on our toes now, Jade. Don't worry, Uncle Paige. We'll just take some pictures and get home. Paige is worried. Jade is not. Nothing new here, but at least it's consistent. I dislike that the rats can pass through the lasers. I will be upset until somebody shows me a picture of a rat wearing power armor. You're gonna go and make me wear out my jet boots, Jade. The latest style in transportation. That's not all, Jade. That's not all. <laughs> ha! Ha! So much for their fancy security. A Reaper. They're sicking a reaper on us. Looks like he's on the prowl. He must keep an eye on the ducks. It's getting too risky, Jade. We're needed back at the lighthouse. Let's stop while we still can. If the Iris Network is telling the truth, then this is where we need it most. Pages of Ventriloquist. He's also worried. Apparently, Jade didn't think to tell Paige about the Reaper she knew about. I guess she just didn't want to ruin the surprise. Her first order of business is to fix the elevator. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Not a personal, Jade. Even the Vaders have been screwed with. Hang in there, old buddy. Uncle Paige will make it all better. You think you can fix it? I'll give it a go, but don't be expecting any miracles. Took one heck of a jolt to look at that cable. It's gonna be needing a new beater, too. It's up to you to find an organ donor. A fuse. Hmm. Oh, where do you expect me to find a fuse around here? Gotta have one. He's in bad shape. As per the piston, did what it could. Just put the thingamajig back in the whatchamacallit. <laughs> Welcome to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed episode 4. More to come next Thursday. This one is a little shorter than I originally planned because I'm also working on a separate video talking about all the evidence that suggests that pearls are in fact Divalite. 
So look forward to that. Make sure you subscribe so you won't miss any episodes in case I forget to share them. Ha <laughs> ha